As fall sets in in northern Nevada, black bears are making a desperate attempt to prepare for the coming winter months by stocking up on calories. They must pile on enough pounds to make it through hibernation. But they're finding a food source that's proving to be a problem both for them and humans. Garbage is a really good resource from a physiological perspective. And the reason for that is because it's predictable in space and time. Garbage cans are set out the same day of the week, week after week. And even if a bear goes into a garbage can or dumpster and eats all the calories out of it, the next week it's replenished. With bears seeking food in urban areas, human-bear conflicts are on an increase. And if left unchecked, they could lead to dangerous encounters. But then all of a sudden, within a blink, she was just running towards us like a freight train. I physically broke through the middle of the door and crawled through the door. Regardless of how habituated they may be to people, they're still wild animals and uh, they're potentially dangerous. When you look at places in Washoe County and some of these neighborhoods that are at the urban wildland interface, 20 or 30 years ago, those areas supported very few bears. There were a few berry patches, maybe some pine nuts, a perennial stream or two that the bears would take advantage of. Now, 20 or 30 years later, you have hundreds of homes, basically thousands of fruit trees that have all matured over the last 20 to 30 years, providing lots of food. You have garbage that's placed out on a very reliable time scale and uh, occasional koi ponds and urban ponds providing a water source. Those neighborhoods now provide better habitat than what the bears can find typically up in these wildland areas. More food, more water, plenty of cover, supports a lot of bears. Bears are like living garbage disposals. They, they just eat about anything and the reason they do that is because physiologically in the fall they have to put on a lot of weight and body mass because when they go into their dens for the winter they can lose up to 30 percent of their body mass and so in the fall bears will be consuming up to 25 to 30 thousand calories per day put that in perspective you know an adult human male on average may eat 2,000 to 3,000 calories so they're really in a position physiologically where they have to eat a lot of calories. Between 1987 and 2012, the average number of bear complaints rose tenfold, from a mere 20 complaints per year average between 1987 and 1991 to 282 between 2008 and 2012. And 77% of all those complaints fall within Washoe County. With bears frequenting urban neighborhoods on a more regular basis, action has to be taken to prevent these hungry mammals from getting too comfortable and becoming human habituated. Carl Lackey, a bear biologist with the Nevada Department of Wildlife, is tasked with the job of teaching these garbage-seeking bears a lesson that will keep them and the local residents safe. We've opted to do the on-site releases with aversive conditioning, meaning we release the bears right where we catch them or, or very close to it within that bear's home range, typically, and uh, then subject the, the bear to a bad experience around humans, the, the aversive condition. We shoot at it with 12-gauge with, uh, rubber bullets, rubber buckshot, beanbag rounds, and then chase it with the Carolina bear dogs, whose job is to harass and haze that bear, hopefully up a tree. Um, and it's all designed to modify the behavior of really bold bears. It's not going to make a bear um, quit going after human sources of food and nine times out of ten it's not going to make a bear leave its home range or leave a certain area. But what we have noticed is it will make bears less bold around people. They become more nocturnal which is what they should be doing in urban situations and when they see people they're running the other direction. Stopping these bears' urban foraging habits is essential to prevent the more serious scenario of a house break-in, which is inevitable once they've accustomed themselves to this learned behavior. And once a bear gets in your house, it will stop at nothing to find what it came for. 
Well, when the bear broke in after we found the place when we uh, came back here, uh, our front door had a hole in it. it. It actually put a hole through the speakeasy opening and it crawled through the uh, top of the door, right through the middle of it. Uh, we figured the bear was in the house for approximately uh, three days or so, living inside the house. Uh, it went through all our cabinets here uh, in the kitchen, um, spread uh, spread condiments all over the floor. Not necessarily food, but uh, ketchup, mustard, uh, uh, seasoning, uh, flour, those kind of things, not your traditional food. Uh, made a mess of the entire house. Uh, left the refrigerator wide open. It was continuously running. Uh, burned up the refrigerator. There was just a mess everywhere, all over the carpet. Uh, did approximately $10,000 in damage. Um, had to replace all the carpet in the house, which would had just been replaced uh, about six months prior to that, so we had to replace it again. You come to realize that you don't necessarily need a, a, uh, a robber or a thief to break into your house, and in essence, this is a different kind of robber or a different kind of thief. Uh, you know, but yeah, feeling violated. I had a big hole in my door. Uh, you know, it was going into winter, and um, it just, uh, yeah, it was a huge shock, and we had a tremendous mess to clean up. And it was very frustrating, especially when we just had the house remodeled. I got a text message from my neighbor telling me that he thought there was a bear that broke in. And I kind of shrugged it off. And then I got home at about 8 at night and came home and my house was in ruins. Every single bit of food that was anywhere, no matter how high or low or behind what, was eaten. It even got into... A, my like salad dressing, mustard, ketchup, ate all of that. And you could see like a trail of mustard and it led to my bedroom and just kind of all over the place. It attacked the door handle and somehow unlocked it. And then about three days later after the initial break in, I woke up the next morning and I found my screen door just laying on the ground where it must have put a paw here and just ripped it off thinking that it was going to get inside the house somehow and it completely just destroyed it. The car thing was a week later when you think everything's done. I got another text from my neighbor and he's like, hey man, I don't know how to tell you this, but I think a bear broke into your car. And again, you think, well, maybe it's just a scratch or something. And my driver's side window was completely shattered. There's glass everywhere in the car, everywhere outside. And the car smelt really bad, and there was mud covered everywhere, like the seats. Again, it's just kind of like that sense of security, like not even my car's safe. The only thing I can think of is I had some gum and I had some pistachios, but I mean, you don't think that those can really put off a big smell, but maybe just anything, they're so desperate that anything that resembles food they're after, so it's just kind of one of those things. Just need to make sure to not keep trash and food in my car because definitely don't want it to happen again. Well, we're lucky enough to live up here where there is a lot of wildlife, actually. And the bears come, the bears come around, uh, you, it's apple season, and they seem to know when the apples are gonna be ready. And so she has been here, I've never seen one in the day, ever. We see bear poop all around, so we know they've been here. And we're always careful um, for that reason. But today, she's been here since early morning with her three little cubs. And uh, so I told my daughter earlier not to go out to the car without letting me know. So she and I opened the back gate and, uh, and the bear was down on the ground with her cubs. And this is a distance from that gate. But um, she all of a sudden, her posture changed and then she charged us. And when that happens, it's a frightening situation because she moves like a train, she's so fast. Uh, but then she stopped and we ran into the back immediately and closed the door because you just don't want to mess around with them. She's just here protecting her babies and I don't want anything bad to ever happen to them. But being around people is not good for them. When bears first learn of the solid waste that's available to them in our neighborhoods, they are still pretty wary of humans and take off at the first sight of us. But as time goes by and they find garbage cans an easy source of calories, 
they scout out other parts of your home. This leads to them becoming far more bold and therefore more dangerous. Once a bear has become bold enough to enter your house, it unfortunately becomes a threat to human safety. So stopping bears foraging in our neighborhoods is a priority for your safety and the bear's life. Black bears do not belong inside people's homes. I don't care if you've left a window open, a door open, or if the bear tore a door open to get in. They don't belong inside people's homes. If bears are inside homes and we know or we're positive we have that right bear, that's going to be a bear that's going to be, be euthanized. Um, but we try to give the bears the benefit of the doubt. If, if we're uncertain whether it's the right bear or not, we'll tag it. And in those cases, those are the bears that we may attempt translocation. What that does is it tells us if the damage or the break-ins continue, then we know that that was the wrong bear if it takes them a week or two to, to get back home. But if the problems cease, and then that tagged bear shows up two or three weeks later and the problems continue, then we know who the culprit is and we can deal with it. Our den should be, hopefully. Just over the ridge, or just, on this side? Just we began the research on bears in western Nevada, down. specifically in the Lake Tahoe Basin and the western part of the Great Basin back in the late 1990s. Uh, and it was a collaborative effort between myself when I was at the University of Nevada, Reno, and the Nevada Department of Wildlife. And our goals really were just to understand what was going on with the bear population. What we heard from a lot of people that lived in the Tahoe Basin, for example, is that I've lived here for 30 years, I've never seen a bear. The last three years, I've seen six of them. Is the bear population increasing? And we didn't know if it was an increase in the bear population or if it was a redistribution of the population due to anthropogenic foods, namely in the, source of, in the form of garbage. And so we were really interested in knowing what was happening to the bear population. So there were some basic bear ecology questions, but we also wanted to understand what the drivers and the mechanisms were for human-bear conflicts and how to mitigate those uh, conflicts. Our data over the course of this research shown that bears and garbage are actually having benefits from a physiological perspective. They're heavier on average than their wildland counterparts. Um, sometimes they'll have smaller home ranges. Um, and for females, they actually, in some cases, were giving birth to more cubs. Unfortunately, those females down these urban areas lose their cubs at a high level because, namely, collisions with vehicles. The other thing that our data has demonstrated is that these urban areas are kind of attractive sinks, which means that because of the garbage in their bears are attracted to them, but they have higher mortality rates than birth rates, which is the definition of a sink. And so there are areas where you can lose individuals from the population. Fortunately for us in the Tahoe Basin, and specifically on the Nevada side, these urban and exurban sprawl areas only cover about 7% of the landscape. So we have an opportunity to still have a growing bear population, despite the fact that some of these urban areas can be these attractive sinks. So one of the first improvements we did before we electrified the house was instead install a metal uh, bear box or garbage container uh, to minimize the uh, amount of garbage that was distributed all over the area. Uh, our neighbors over the years have added these are great help, uh, keep the area clean, keep the bears away. Um, and it's probably one of the most uh, best improvements you can do right off the get go. So this particular unit has a key that comes with it. It's mounted on the side here. Uh, you need the key to open this. And uh, this, this unit holds two garbage cans. They have uh, two unit and one unit systems. Uh, but as you can see, once it's locked up, uh, it's very difficult to get into and we've never had a break in or had any issues after we installed this. This is the front door that was broken into previously uh, that we've had to replace. We, we installed a system right on the front of the door. We've also installed a system on the back of the deck so they don't have access to the back of the deck or cannot uh, go enter through the back door. 
since we've done all the bear proofing, we've had uh, very minimal uh, encounters with the bears. Uh, there's been less signs. They are in the area. Um, it's, it's evident they haven't gone away, but we have not had uh, the, the house broken into or uh, any activity uh, around the outside of the house like we had previously to installing our system. This homeowner had called me after having several break-ins at their property and what we did at the home was set up a safe but effective electrical deterrent at the house that effectively keeps the bears away from the home and keeps their house safe and gives the homeowner a peace of mind. So one of the products that I've created is this electric bear mat. It sits in front of the doorway and effectively protects the doors from bears entering the house. It's a very user-friendly system on the home. There's no wires to remove. People turn the controller off and just walk into the house. But it's also very effective as well. The bear can't touch the door without stepping on the mat. But we use other products as well on the house. Every door, every window needs a different option. One of our options here is what we call the electric wires. It just protects the lower portion of the window so when the bear reaches up to break the window, it gets a safe but effective shock. One more option for homeowners is the electric removable wires. It's a very simple product to use. When they show up to the house, they turn the system off and they simply unhook the wires and put them away while they're at the property. When they're ready to leave and they want to secure the home again, they simply stretch the wires across the door, reattaching them, and go turn the system on, and it's okay to leave the house. Bears can cause devastating damage to your home. Not only will they break your windows, break your doors, rip holes through your siding, but they can completely trash the inside of the house. I've seen gas stoves turned on from the bears, sinks flooded and clogged, flooding the homes, carpets destroyed food and trash all over the house, cabinets ripped out of the wall, and refrigerators knocked over. You don't want a bear in the house. You want to do everything you can to deter that bear and keep your property safe and secure. The biggest mistake to make when living in bear country is to think that it will never happen to you. So here are a few tips that cost nothing to do to keep a bear from your door. Keep your property clean. Don't leave garbage lying around and easily accessible. If you live or are vacationing in an apartment complex or condominium, don't leave garbage bags outside your door. Instead, place them immediately in one of the provided garbage containers. And remember to always lock the doors and latches on bear-proof dumpsters and cans. Don't place garbage cans out before the morning of pickup. This just trains the bears to arrive the night before garbage day. Place any highly pungent and perishable scraps like chicken and turkey carcasses in a plastic bag and freeze them until garbage day. This will prevent any attractive odors from lingering around your house and garbage can. Minimize animal feeds around your home. Keep pet bowls clean and clear up any spilt food. If feeding the birds, use temporary feeders that can be removed after use and store horse grain and chicken feeds in lockable metal containers. Pick up fallen fruit as regularly as possible. Rotting fruit on the ground is a VIP invitation to a bear. Clean your barbecue straight after using it and keep pungent fire starters locked away. Remove all foods, including chewing gum, from your vehicle. A bear will even break into a car for an old candy wrapper, so remove all wrappers, old beverage containers, and garbage too. Don't make it easy for them. Close and secure all your doors and windows when leaving your house. Educate and encourage your neighbors to take the same steps. The more households in your neighborhood that are bear aware will keep the bears from your door. But to really deter a bear and get it to move on, there are a few things you can do to bear-proof and have peace of mind. Only store garbage in a bear-resistant or bear-proof container. This will stop the bear from gaining any type of reward when attempting to open it. Install an electric fence around your fruit trees and beehives. This can be of the permanent or removable type, but without it, the bears will continue to return for the delicious fruit and honey. Add extra bolts to your doors to remove any movement when a bear pushes on it. If it feels secure, they're more likely to move on. And avoid external doors with weak points of entry like doggy doors and glass panes. 
Protecting your home with a simple electric system will stop the bears from thinking it's accessible and will pay for itself over and over by preventing a break-in. All of these improvements will deter a bear from your property, but the simplest things are often the best deterrents. When leaving your home for long periods, remove all foods, condiments, spices and oils, anything that a bear will find attractive. Remember, a bear's sense of smell is possibly the strongest in the animal kingdom, about seven times stronger than that of a bloodhound. They rely on this keen sense of smell for everything from locating mates, detecting danger, identifying cubs, and finding food. If you can't smell it, it doesn't mean that a bear can't. And if there's the faintest odor of something a bear thinks is edible coming from your home, they will break in to find it. Nearly all house break-ins are due to food items in the home, even when the homeowner was convinced they had removed all attractants. Removing all these attractive items while you're away for the season is probably the simplest thing you can do to avoid this devastating scene when you arrive home. So in a place like Washoe County, I think there's a lot of opportunity to have a successful coexistence of bears and people and, and reduction in conflicts. I don't think we'll ever completely eliminate the conflicts out there just because if you have a, a neighborhood, for example, and 90% of the homes are compliant in trying to reduce uh, conflicts by making their garbage unavailable to bears, even a small percentage of the population, and it could be accidental um, and non-intentional, if you have those food resources available, you could still end up with a bear down into those uh, urban areas. And so we'll probably never completely get rid of the conflicts, but I think we can, uh, as communities, work together to get those conflict levels down to a socially acceptable level. Bear resistant trash cans cost anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. And I just tell people, what's your safety worth? The safety of your kids. You have bears coming into your neighborhoods. They're there for a reason. One bear in a neighborhood within town is an anomaly. But when you have several bears on a consistent basis in these neighborhoods that are at the urban wildland interface, we cannot keep those bears out of those neighborhoods. They're there for a reason. And that's the attractants, the human sources of food. To file a complaint regarding a garbage storage issue in your neighborhood, please call the Washoe County Health District hotline on 775-328-2436. That's 775-328-2436. Or to report a bear issue at your home, please call the Nevada Department of Wildlife hotline on 775-688-2327. That's 775-688-2327. And remember, if Washoe County Health District receives two or more valid complaints in a 12-month period regarding animals accessing your garbage due to improper storage, you will be required to install an approved animal-resistant container at your own expense. <laughs>